everyone, Mr. T back again from sunny Dominican Republic, this time to present to you how to go about renting or buying scooters, motorbikes or vehicles in Dominican Republic. I'm going to do it out of Sasua with the businesses here, but you should find the prices fairly similar across the whole nation. So uh, let's get started. Renting a car for exploring all of DR is definitely the way to go. However, it's still a good idea to rent the vehicle even if you just want to explore, say, one region, such as Porta Plata and surrounding towns, Punta Cana, Samana, Barahona, as this way you can explore both coastlines, countryside and hilly areas. If you're sure you'll be exploring rural or mountainous areas, then I highly suggest you rent the four-wheel drive for added safety and practicality. Down here they call them Jepetas. Also make sure you have a good road map on hand as good road signs are very scarce and often they are not that clear at all. So either use a GPS or a map and learn a few key Spanish phrases to ask locals for directions. Most of the major car rental companies that are familiar to most North Americans or European consumers are also represented here in Dominican Republic. Among them are Avis, Budget, Dollar, Enterprise, Hertz, National, Alamo, Thrifty, Eurocar and Sixth. You can also find many locally owned rental companies with good options and prices. You just have to shop around a bit. All the major car rental companies are located at the international airports as well as in the larger cities. And for the best rates for those companies, you can book online ahead of time. Have in mind that if you're renting from a major car company, you will need a valid credit card with enough funds for a deposit. However, if you're renting from a local company, you can pay in cash as well, yet this is usually the full amount up front. Travelers to the Dominican Republic should also familiarize themselves with their personal insurance coverage to determine if it already covers car rental. It's also a good idea to carefully read any rental agreements you sign to understand their terms and conditions or additional fees if applicable. Normally all rates are inclusive of third-party liability coverage, yet do check this out of course. One-way car hire within the Dominican Republic is often possible too, but it'll incur an additional fee and such a fee will vary depending on your collection and drop-off destination. But you can find this out in advance. Alright folks, I'm at Extreme Rent-A-Car and Bikes here. Okay. Hola Jorge. Hey, mi amigo, como estas? Can you stay? Let me see if I can <laughs> operate the camera here. Alright, so Jorge, he's got a line of uh, bikes he's going to present to us. What's behind you here? You got a scooter? Yes, we have it here a uh, different model of scooter. We have a uh, motocross, we have a sport bike ninja, we have a real Harley Davidson. We have too many different models, but all the style that people are looking at. Same, we have a scooter, depending on the day, a $20 motocross, uh, a sport bike, uh, between $100 per day. Uh -huh. Depending on the day you keep it, we have How a many days? price for you. you know. So, something like uh, the ninja here. If you had that for a week, how much uh, would yeah, the day be? $80 per day. $80 per day. And yeah. the Harley Davidson? It is a little more expensive, you know, and the $100. Okay, cool. So, uh, nice selection here. And you even have uh, the Gatos, 250. And they have many bikes behind me here as well. So, um, if they want to contact you guys, uh, do you have a, a standard telephone number or WhatsApp number? Yes, we have uh, the office number. It's 809-571-4334. Uh, uh, okay. And the WhatsApp, 809-973-8282. We are in Susua in front of the Pan Popular. Excellent. Yeah. So, uh, any final things you want to tell them about renting here? Do they need a uh, passport or what do they need? Uh, yeah, insurance? It's good. We all the documents, driver license and passport, but we fill it up the contract. That's With a it. little contract. And the money. And the money. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay. Just uh, out here in front of a few vehicles that he has, these are what they call jepetas. How much are they uh, per day to rent? 
Yes, uh, we have a different vehicle assembly. We have that SUV for uh -huh. five people. We have it per day at $50 a day. And depending how many days you keep it, we can do a better rate. Okay, you can sharpen the pencil a bit. So uh, I'll just back up a little bit here so they can see the type of vehicles. They look nice. So these are all automatic? Yes. Okay. The automatic and uh, air conditioning. Yeah. And what? gasoline. Gasoline, not diesel. Not, diesel. not, not gas, propane. So. All right, so this is petrol cars, and this is, again, extreme rent car, and that's just across from Banco Popular, or Bailey's with Hotel Sasua in here. So come on down and uh, rent from them here. Thank you very much. Have a good day, guys. You too. Now, if you're looking for something like a Kia Picante, only like 30-odd dollars a day, plus minus a couple of dollars, to rent. I've rented them before. It just depends on if you take it for like two, three days or if you take it for a week or two, then you can probably get it down under $30. So there you go. Okay, Extreme Renter Car also has these nice little uh, ATVs here. Yes. Fausto, yes. ¿cuánto se hace esa? He said 200cc. Okay, he's yes. good in English. 250, is it? No, 200. 200cc. Yes. All right, handy little things. So uh, he's just around the corner from uh, Extreme Rental Car. You just walk down towards, uh, you got Casa Marina right here. So everything's very close. And then you find Fausto. And how much per day? The, the, the price is the best. Mm -hmm. The price, you need a one hour. I run for one hour, 24 hour, 24 hour. Yeah. yeah. So if I want it for 24 hours, how much should I pay? Yeah, it's like uh, $25. $25 a day? Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much, Fausto. Have a good day. You're welcome. To rent a scooter, you come to the beach road here with Danny. Hola, Danny. Hola. I'm going to do a little bit of translating because Danny uh, doesn't speak English, but there's plenty of people around him who does, so you can still come and rent. So, Danny, ¿cuántos uh, scoot uh, scooters or uh, motores tienes? Cinco. Okay. So, cinco pasolas. Sí, pasola. So, yeah, so he's got uh, five pasolas, so you probably call them scooters. Y por día, ¿cuánto cuesta? De 25 a 30 dólares. 25 to 30 dollars, depending on for how long you're renting it. Yeah. And he's a solid guy. He's here. I've come to this spot on the beach road here for many years. There's sandwich shops, there's massage places. So, it's easy to find. You're just down from the stairs of Flip Flop. Let me just turn the camera around. There's Flip Flop stairway there where those girls are. And we swing back here to Danny. So, Danny, uh, el más grande motores. Uh, ¿Qué tipo es motores y cuánto cc? I'm just asking him, uh, what are the bigger bikes and how many cc? 225, eh, 125 cc. Yeah. So he's got uh, 150, 100, uh, 225, 250s. He uh, más o menos cuánto cuesta por día para eso? Eso para 35, 40 dólares. 35 to 40 dólares per day for one of those. ¿Y qué identificación necesario? No, solamente un contrato. Okay, there, it's a small contract, and yeah. then. Uh, you wear a helmet so you don't get caught by Ahmed here, the, the cops, and you're good to go. Yeah. All right, so uh, come here to the... How are you doing? We've got a uh, familiar face there. Come to the beach road with Danny. Gracias, Danny. Okay. Y buenos días. To be eligible to rent a vehicle, you must be at least 21 years of age. However, some major car rental companies may stipulate a minimum age of 25 years. You should bring a valid driver's license from your home country. And note this driver's license is only valid for the duration of your legal stay here. For example, your 30-day tourist card or visa term. You'll need to present your passport to the rental company and for sure leave a copy with them. However, do not leave the original with them because it has happened in the past 
that foreigners have been extorted for money in order to get their passport back to fly out. So under no circumstances, leave it with them. Driving in Dominican Republic is on the right hand side of the road. Turning right at red lights is permitted. However, you really got to watch it because motorbikes come on both sides of you and as you swing right, you may get hit in the side. So you really got to use your mirrors and look over your shoulders before you make that right turn. Seat belts are mandatory when driving a car in Dominican Republic. And the use of mobile phones while driving is prohibited with the exception of hands-free system. Drivers should carry with them a valid driver's license, the registration document, and insurance documents at all times while you are driving. Petrol stations in the Dominican Republic are generally closed at 6 p.m., although a few do offer 24-hour service. Whatever the petrol tank level shows is the same amount that must be in the vehicle when you return it. Make sure you film or at least take pictures of any transportation device that you rent to ensure you don't get accused of damages that you didn't actually cause. And for cars, this also means inside the vehicle. If you're concerned about potential liability, then go for what's called full insurance cover, including what's called a Casa del Conductor option which ensures that you're not immediately sent to a jail in case of a serious accident with death or serious injury caused to someone else. Instead, they have these type of hotel jails where it's actually quite comfortable that you'll be staying in until your lawyer can get everything sorted out. Major highways in the DR tend to be fairly smooth and in good condition. However, smaller roads, especially in rural areas, and in the east of the country are often full of potholes and require careful driving. In many towns, they love their speed bumps too. However, many are not painted and you might just hit them hard with the vehicle if you don't pay good attention. Lighting and road markings are also considerably less prevalent than those you might be used to at home. So for trips to mountains or rural areas, Consider renting a four-wheel drive, as I may have mentioned earlier, and keep your gas tank as full as you can. Gas stations should, however, be easy to come by in cities and larger towns, but are few and far between way out in the countryside. Tolls are common on major roads, so keep small change handy in Dominican pesos. It's important that you understand that although road rules are technically in place here, Drivers in the DR routinely disobey them with little thought of consequence, resulting in dangerous situations for the inexperienced DR drivers. Amongst all types of drivers and pedestrians, you'll find folks who travel erratically, and drunk driving is not uncommon either. The key to safer driving here is to focus 100% on your driving, including who's coming from behind you and all other angles. Accidents here often happen when folks do sightseeing and look sideways and then suddenly boom it happens. So use your awareness and don't trust that all other people will obey your habitual road rules from back home. To buy a car or a motorbike you'll need to present a valid passport from your home country or Dominican ID which is called a cedula. However, you don't have to possess a Dominican residency to purchase a vehicle in DR, and that also goes for property as well. Now, if you decide to purchase a vehicle here, then once you've found the one that you're keen on, don't be too quick to get talked into anything or being rushed to put a deposit down. Instead, ask if you can take a copy or picture of the matricula which is the ownership paper. Now ask him or her, does this vehicle have any liens on it, any money owing on it? Just take in their information, but don't believe a word that they say until your lawyer has checked it all out. Your lawyer will for a small amount be able to run a check with DGII, which is the tax department here, who issues the new matriculars 
which they refuse to do unless the vehicle has no liens against it. Doing this due diligence might just save you a lot of headache and trying to get back your deposit. The paper that shows whether there's a lien on the vehicle is called Plan Pilot. If everything stacks up fine with the vehicle after doing the above suggested due diligence, then against a well-formulated receipt and a copy of the actual seller owner ID, pay him or her a small deposit to hold the car until your lawyer has drafted the purchase agreement so all parties can meet up to settle the balance against you receiving the keys, the signed agreement, the original matricula, any insurance still valid, and your new vehicle. After the purchase has been completed, you should apply for the matricula to be transferred into your own name. This can be done with the help of a lawyer. The process normally takes two to four weeks, but it can take longer depending on the tax department's workflow. Also remember to purchase insurance, which can either be done with a third party or full coverage insurance. Prices vary from $100 to $500 a year, depending on the types of vehicle that you buy. Here's a list of some of the insurance companies which you might consider to go for. a lot of car dealerships along the highways and that can be right from Sabaneta, Cabaretta, Sassua, but especially in Porta Plata. If you want to go to Moca, that's another good place to go looking. And of course Santiago and Santo Domingo has a lot of car dealerships as well. So you just have to look around like when you're overseas and see who's selling what and for what prices. And don't forget in this country, it's okay to haggle. And out here next to the next gas station, you have OK Motors. And they rent out vehicles as well as sell the vehicles. And here you can get an idea of what they charge for older but smaller cars. Well, there's a big one there at the front, 7,500 US. There's one over here, let me just zoom in, for 4,600. Another one, 4,800 US. My guess is they're probably 2005 to 2010. When owning a vehicle, you should know that you have to pay an annual tax when driving it. Normally it needs renewing between November to January. And you'll receive a little sticker that you can put on your window called a Mabeta. The cost of tax depends on the age of your vehicle and varies in price from 1500 to 3000 pesos. Motorbikes do not require Mabeta, however they do need to have an insurance which is very affordable, only about 3 to 400 pesos per year and it's always just a third party cover. If you are looking to buy a vehicle then you should also check out this Dominican site supercaros.com to compare options and prices in different regions. And it's common knowledge that here on the north coast the town called Moca is famous for its variety and affordability of vehicles. So make sure you check that out. All right, everyone, I'm going to take you into a shop now called Crossmaster, which is up the Lamolata Road a little bit off the highway in Sasua. And we'll have a look at some very nice scooters and bikes. Everyone, I'm with the owner, Stefano. Thanks for jumping on camera. Now, we just got to have a look at a few bikes here and scooters so you get an idea what high quality uh, equipment costs and uh, what you can get for your money. What are we looking at here? Okay, here is an uh, Honda Leo, 110cc, the four stroke, a good, a good Passola. This is a good uh, scooter. This is Japanese. Yes, yes, Honda. One, one car warranty, 
on your warranty? Yes. And the advantages buying, say, a Honda compared yes. to uh, your, your Chinese stuff? No, no, no. This is a bit of a business. I have Look at the price. The price is $1,615. So $1,650. $1,650. Here we have some uh, enduro bikes. What yes, are these? Yes. Okay. This is a, a bike for, of the road and off road. Honda, I guess. Yes. So and Honda, Honda, 100, 119 cc full injection. And this is 115 carburetor. So 190 and 150. 190 150. Yes. And fuel injection. Yes, there's a fuel injection. This the, the, the price is then four thousand four four thousand five hundred dollar. Mm -hmm. This is three thousand four hundred fifteen dollar. Okay, so we have an Apache here. Yes. This is a very popular bike for the last few years in uh, oh. that advanced. Yes. So how many CC? This is this is an Apache. The brand is PBS from India. Mm -hmm. This is two hundred CC. The price is two thousand four hundred ninety dollar. Yeah, and, and, uh, and have a one year warranty. Smooth looking bike. Yes. This is over in Susua Bajo. Lots of motorbikes, different types. There's some uh, cute little ones. If you want the type I'm driving, that's the Tauro there. And then you have these X1000s. So there's not a shortage of different motorbikes and types of scooters. There's all the scooters over here. And that's their service department. Let me just film a bit outside. The place is called Auto Repuesto Lucio Dominguez. And it's just as you're hitting the hill to head out of Susua. Or if I poke it the other way, this is Susua Bajo. So you come to the last bridge down there. And Lucio's is just here on the left hand side as you're heading towards Puerto Plata. All right, folks, if you're looking to import a vehicle from the United States or Canada into Dominican Republic, you can contact one of my good friends. His name is Johnny. He works from down here, but he's worked in importing vehicles for years. So contact Pilgrim Auto Import at gmail.com. Actually, if I could just get the cameraman to go over here and uh, poke at this sticker. All right, this is what you'll often see on the vehicles that have been imported right there. Now, another thing is, if you need help down here, I'm here and I can be hired at a very reasonable price. So just per hour, you can go out with me and we can look at scooters, motorbikes, vehicles. I'll help you with the language part and I can also help with the negotiation. I've got 35 plus years in the sales game, so I know all the different tricks they try to pull in order to uh, get you to pay more or maybe not give you the correct documents. That's another one you've got to make sure is in order. So uh, if you need my help, it's info at educatedtraveler.info.